Good afternoon, students. I am Ms. Chandala S. Patel from Devapati College of Nursing. And today we just, uh, I'm working as an assistant professor. So today we'll see one very, very important topic from subject midwifery and obstetrical nursing. So what this image shows? One person is there and who is giving CPR to this neonate or baby. So of course, yes, today we'll see very, very important topic which is very applicable in the clinical area, especially when we are conducting the deliveries that time. So the topic actually is neonatal resuscitation. So today we'll discuss regarding the neonatal resuscitation. Introduction, first we'll see the introduction of this topic. As you all know, you all, know about the birth asphyxia. Already you have studied this topic in the third year pediatric. So what do you mean by birth asphyxia? It means breathing difficulty immediately after the birth. And nowadays it shows that many, I mean, in the many units having this problem at the birth, that is birth asphyxia. And because of the same reason, it is the main cause for the neonatal death. So yes, we have to focus on this birth asphyxia management as well as the it results why it occurs. It results because of the interfere of the blood in blood circulation in the maternal as well as through the placenta. As you all know, how baby or fetus is receiving the blood nutrition. Of course, it's through the placenta. So yes, if there is a placental gas exchange deficiency is there, or if uh, placenta is not getting enough oxygen, so that's why fetal tissues will not also get the enough amount of oxygen, blood and nutrients and that's why this birth asphyxia may occur. Now, what is the main aim of this neonatal resuscitation? Why we should give the resuscitation to this neonates? The main thing that is circulation to correct acidosis means for the effective circulations we have to enhance in the neonatal body as well as it helps to prevent the hypothermia. Yes, the, it maintains the proper temperature among the units and it helps to maintain or regulate their body temperature and therefore that also we can prevent the hypothermia. Also we can prevent the hypoglycemia as well as hemorrhage, hypoglycemia, blood sugar level, maybe because of this birth asphyxia or any other reason, blood sugar level will be deficient. So we have to prevent that as well as hemorrhage, any internal body is there that also we have to prevent. That's why we have to give neonatal resuscitation to among these babies. Now next, preparation for delivery. Now how you will prepare for conduction of the delivery? As you all know, when we are working in the labor room, any time any emergencies will arrive. It is, yes. It may be a complete surprise for all of us, means for all health team members, those are conducting the delivery. So first, these three W's are very, very important here while we are preparing for the deliveries. So first, what risk factors are associated with the pregnancy? Means before conduction or before the exact delivery of the okay, we should know about the what are the risk factors are present in that particular mother? We should identify how she is high risk case, as well as what personnel should be present at the time of delivery. Personnel, very, very important here. You know, personnel, those are very skillful work trained, as well as those are trained of species, obviously. And equipment, which equipment they require by conducting the delivery, all equipment should be ready. In case of handling any emergencies, everything should be ready. Next risk factor, as I have said to you, this three W's are very, very important. Now, first factor, that is a risk factor. Now, what are the risk factors may be there? How we can identify, yes, XYZ mother is there, she is in the liver, and yes, she is in the case of so and so, she is a high risk case. As per this protocol, so first, mother with the high blood pressure, edema, as well as diabetes or severe anemia. It means, suppose, any mother is suffering with any disease condition throughout her pregnancy, throughout her AMC period, like if she is suffering with high blood pressure. In detail, we start regarding this hypertension, pregnancy-induced hypertension, or PI disease condition, where 
to just select one mother, those are suffering with the high blood pressure, which is a high risk case, as well as those are suffering with the diabetes, gestational diabetes, we'll say at that time, as well as those mothers are anemic in these cases, we have to identify the case, and yes, we'll see, yes, we we'll see, it is known as a high risk mother. The main thing that is a bleeding in the second or third trimester, the main, very, very important thing. How you will identify if she is a high risk case? Obviously, throughout the pregnancy, throughout the NC period, there is still unknown now, or there is no really belief is present. But in case of any mother, if during her second trimester or third trimester, bleeding is there, obviously it is no case of high risk, that there is no case of APS. That the PH disease condition also will learn in future afterwards. That is an antipartum hemorrhage. Means before the onset of true labor pain, breathing may start, which is very abnormal. Third, that is previous fetal or neonatal death. This is also very important. If that mother is having previous history of fetal or neonatal death, or also we we'll say that still birth, that time that mother is also. No case of high risk. Fourth, that is history of premature or low birth weight baby. Premature and uh, also we say the low birth weight babies. Low birth weight baby means those babies weight is less than 2.5 kg at birth as per what? Indian. So, now, so yes, if that baby is below 2.5 kg or premature means before completion of whole gestation weeks, if that baby is born. Then it is also in the case of this prematurity. And if that mother is having previous history, means during her previous deliveries, this condition may occur, that is also in future, if not in case of high risk. Age, age matters a lot. Yes, of course, 16 years. If mother has not completed 16 years of age, as well as if she has completed more than 35 years of age, 35 years can be completed, that time we see it is an elderly primary mother. So yes, these mothers are also comes under the high risk cases. Those have not completed 16 years of age, as well as those have completed 35 years of age. Again, breach or other abnormal presentation, breach presentation. At least we know the basic information that is a vertex. Vertex is a normal presentation when we are conducting the normal delivery. But breach as well as other abnormal presentations are there. If it is there, then that conditions are there, also it is no case of high risk. And last, multiple pregnancy. Of course, multiple pregnancy. It is also not, we will say it is a high risk case, but yes. When we are conducting the actual normal, uh, actual delivery, normal vaginal delivery, yes, it may create some problems when conducting the delivery. So these all are the mean how we should identify this particular mother is uh, high risk mother or how to identify the high risk cases. Understanding students? Okay, so we'll see the next one. Sorry for the students. Next W that is for who is conducting the delivery or the main factor that is a person. What do you think? Personal means who should be conducted in the way? So, see, uh, we are also the trained person who is giving this CPR. Please just tell me here that this is on the for the community. Which means he is a trained person who is giving CPR to the unit. Now, the main important thing, a person who has skill of basic resuscitation, the basic resuscitation scheme is very, very important. CPR, already you know in picture about the CPR, that is cardiopulmonary resuscitation, that only we are discussing among the new owners. So person who is very skillful in giving CPR to the babies, he should be able to that time when we are conducting the delivery, that is present a week or at a week or Second, individual with the doctor, obviously, trained optician or doctors who should be there, as well as nurse, those are conducting the delivery. So, then, technique of positive pressure method means those persons, they are having more 
or they are very trained in case of this, maintaining this, how to operate or techniques. So they should know very well regarding the techniques of <coughs> positive pressure regulations. Now, last equipment. First W, the highest mother. How we are identifying the highest cases. Second W was for the person, what type of persons should be there. And last step is the equipment. What type of equipment should be ready or what type of equipment will require when conducting the delivery or when giving the neural resuscitation. So what do you say about this image? This is a source of heat. It's called as a radiant warmer. Now, this is 200 by 1. Previously, previous days, they were using that 200 by 1, which they came over like from a small table lamp like that um, uh, world were there, and that they were using to keep the baby warm or to just provide warmth to the baby. Nowadays, usually, we are using this radiant warmer. This is the called as radiant warmer, and that they are, they are keeping the baby inside in this warmer, and it's maintaining the temperature at the same time here. You know, it's the uh, NIC is also there. Now, first, that is a radiant bone or 200 back bulbs. Second, that is a minimum two clay directions for each new. Means, maybe it is a multiple pregnancy, single pregnancy, no matter, but two clay directions they require for each new. Oxygen supply of this, it should be there. Oxygen supply, we require oxygenation as per the baby's demand. As per the <coughs> condition, sorry. So, oxygen supply should be ready. The very important thing here, which is a self inflating ambu bag. What is this self inflating ambu bag? Anyway, have you seen this? Obviously, it's there in the report. So, you know that even regarding the ambu bag, I will show you the image. Ambu bag is the face mask of the different sizes, size of this ambu bag, and the face mask which we are using, which is very, very important. Because it should be fit for that new as per their weight. Some babies are enough in the bed, but some are the premature babies or <coughs> lower weight babies are there. Next thing that is the laryngoscope in the <coughs> endotracheal tube. ET tube, by we are inserting the endotracheal tube, obviously they need the laryngoscope with the <coughs> tubes. ET tubes should be in different different sizes. Jugs, the main that is a when these are the best jobs which we require while we are giving the um, resuscitation to the baby. Suction catheters, 12 and 14 numbers. Depends on the baby's size, but usually in this neonatal case, they require this 12 and 14 numbers suction catheter. The scissors and gloves, these are the best things which should be ready. Now, what is this? This is the image of Ambu bag. So if you can see, this is a face mask, which should be fixed on the babies or that you know, its mouth, which covers the air entry. <coughs> pressure valve, see, it is a pressure valve, which maintains a pressure. This is oxygen container tube. This tube, which carries the oxygen, is oxygen containing tube, and obviously this is a <coughs> oxygen is a bag. Understanding? Yes, we know that the ammo bag is that, but just again, I'm just explaining you the parts. Now, the main thing about the principles, what principles of resuscitation we have to follow when we give the resuscitation to the new ones? <coughs> Sorry. First, Ensure the open airway in the proper position and the clearing the passage of any secretions. Whenever we are giving the any type of this CPR or any type of resuscitation, first the maintainer of maintenance of position is very important. Airway should be open enough and it should provide the passage for any secretions. Obviously, secretions are there, so it should give passage for the secretions. So, to expand out. Then, breathing should initiate the tactile stimulation. First, <coughs> what is tactile stimulation? Breathing with the tactile stimulation and positive pressure ventilation when necessary. 
and it's really for it exactly that kind of circulation and to maintain the circulation with prior compressions and medications. These three principles we have to follow when dealing with neonatal resuscitation. Chest compression or cardiac compression you see in detail, I will show you the videos. Now exactly the steps which you have to follow. First, what is the basic requirement of the newborn babies immediately after the birth as babies? Yes, anyway. What is the first step immediately after the birth of the baby? What we are doing usually? Yes, we are just giving warmth to the newborn, maintaining the temperature. So this is provision of warmth. We are giving from over each fibers, we are maintaining their body temperature. So by placing the baby under the radiant warmer of 200 volt, as I have shown you, I have shown you the image. We have to keep baby under the radiant uh, warmer as well as the windows, which is 200 volt for, for the to keep it or uh, to maintain the temperature of that baby. And the first step, dry with the pre-born ship means immediately after the birth of that uh, baby, we have to clean the baby, dry it properly, and again. Keep, in, uh, keep that baby in the other ships. That's why I said we need two dry ships separately for each baby. First ship we use to clean the baby, it will be, then we just remove it and again we will keep in the another dry ship. Next, position. Now, proper positioning is very, very important. It should be placing by small towel folded and keep under the baby's shoulder to raise it um, at least up to 2 to 2.5 cm above the mattress. Means what you have to do, supposed to do. Suppose this is a new neck, this is a baby. The baby is like that and this is a hip. So just take like that. Small face towel we have to keep under the baby's head and like that baby's head should, should be tilted, slightly tilted. Why? Anyway, with any reason why this baby's head should be tilted slightly and we have to raise it up to 2 to 2.5 cm. Yes, because it should be um, keep proper airway clearance and the idea of keeping this position, you should take to prevent, take care of prevent hyperextension. Sometimes when we are giving this position to the baby, it may cause for the hyperextension of the neck. So that's why keep in point, keep in upon this point, you should take care of this hyperextension to prevent the hyperextension. Next, clearing the airway. Yes, we have to clear the airways. So clearing the way as well as each meconium is present. Meconium aspiration syndrome. Already you know about this meconium aspiration syndrome. What exactly is? We may pass the meconium meconium in the open only and maybe <coughs> it will swallow by the pain. That is condition, and that's why the clearing of the airway is very, very important. Now, my question is that uh, when we are receiving the baby, how do we clean the airway? First, you will go to the nose, or first, you will go to the mouth. Yes, we have to find out the answer, you have to tell me. Now, next slide is a physical or tactile stimulation. First, what we are saying? Provision of warmth. First, we have to keep to provide warmth or maintain the temperature of the baby. Second that is, we have to do proper positioning, means head tilting on. Next that is, a <coughs> third that is clearing the airways. And fourth that is, a physical or tactile stimulation. What do you mean by physical or tactile stimulations? Suddenly we are going for the PP or suddenly we are going, taking the PP to the ventilators. No, first we'll try with this. Stimulation, either it will be the physical or it's also known as tactile stimulations. When we have to give these stimulations, if baby fails to start with spontaneous and effective respirations. Now the main thing is we have to assess the baby's condition. If baby is not receiving oxygen properly, that can be, or baby is not able to uh, pump. Inhale oxygen properly means it helps or fails to establish respiration properly or effective respiration is not occurring in that condition even after driving position. When we are giving dryness or when we are drying the baby as well as we are giving 
proper position. Strip brain is not responding. Respiration functions is not working properly. <coughs> Sorry. Then additional tactile stimulation into and the siatima, flipping the source of the feet. How we are giving this tactile stimulation first? The slapping or flicking the soles of the feet. Now, see, this is the baby. These are the baby's soles. Fit. Pyazet or whatever number. Just flap up, slip like that. You have to just tap on the feet. Again, this is called as stimulation. Then, gently rubbing on the back. If baby is still not responding, then we just that gently we have to. Rub the baby back like that. Understanding? Asas patkal maras may be like slowly, slowly we have to just rub the baby back. Next. So giving of oxygen and air necessary. Now, if we are giving tactile stimulation, physical stimulation to the baby, if the baby is responding well and good, still some babies are not giving response at all after giving stimulations also. What is the last? Oxygen therapy. Yes, at the end we have to start with the oxygenation or we have to provide the proper oxygen to the babies. So, central sinuses. So, usually if baby is not oxygen, getting oxygen properly, obviously he may go into the sinuses. What do you mean by sinuses? Yes, sinuses it means bluish discoloration of the whole body, especially lips. <coughs> Next, positive pressure ventilation. Now, already we have said that immediately we have to provide the oxygen to the baby because the baby is not giving response at all for the whatever measures we have taken. So, what is the next? That is a PVP. It means positive pressure ventilation. What are the indications of this? Indications. In which conditions we are giving? Yes, obviously, apnea, gassing. Apnea. Apnea means there is a difference between dyspnea, apnea. Obviously, there is a difference. Apnea means there is no breathing at all. There is no respiration at all. Gasping. Obviously, there is a severe gasping. You know the gasping situation. Huh? The cover. Heart rate should be below 100 per minute. Then, baby is not giving response. And for the respiration, most apnea as well as Baby's heart rate are, the heart rates are less than 100 per minute <coughs> after the initial steps. Initial steps, whatever we have taken measures, baby is not giving this one yet. And persistent sinuses. Still, baby is in a sinuses on the bridge discoloration of whole body. In these conditions, we have to start immediately start the PP. Procedure. Now, exactly how we have to give the PPV, that procedure you see. The first newborn should be on his back with the neck slightly extended. As I have shown in the image, baby's head should be slightly tilted, 2 to 2.5 days. So we have to raise the baby's head and it should be in a baby's head should be given on, the, on the baby's back. Tight seat to be formed for the infant's mouth and nose. Tight seat, tight above his mouth. Then, ventilate at the rate of 40 to 50 per minute. The rate of ventilation of the rate of oxygen that is 40 to 50 per minute is 20 to 25 centimeter at which to pressure. That is the main ventilation rate. Usually 40 to 50 per minute. At that point, we are giving it. Next thing, we are giving the oxygen, oxygenation already, we have started with the O2, the next that is a chest compression, very very important thing, that is a chest compression. The heart circulates blood through out of the body, as you all know, obviously heart is very very important now because it helps to circulate blood to pour out in the body. Then infant become hypoxic, hypoxia means, what is hypoxia? Yes, obviously lack of oxygen in the tissues, bodies. So heart rate slows and myocardial contractility decreases. When blood circulation is altered, 
when heart is not keeping enough amount of blood oxygen. Obviously, what will happen? Because of the hypoxia, heart rate will be decreased. So, indication of chest compression. When we have to do this chest compression, the main indication that is heart rate below 60 beats per minute. Previously, PPV, positive pressure evaluation, when we have started below the 100 per minute, that time heart rate should be below the 100 per minute. Now here it should be below the 60 beats per minute and that time immediately we have to start with chest compression after 30 seconds of PPV. Means here we have started with the PPV for at least for 30 seconds. We will not be responding. Again we have to start with the chest compression. <coughs> See this is image exactly how they are giving chest compression. So what is this part? This is a as well as this is a middle line between two nipples and with the help of this two finger he is given chest compression. We are using here only two fingers like that and then the gentle pressure we have to apply on the sternum of the baby. We can use two finger and then as well as also we can give that up. This is a nipple line, this is the sternum and with the help of two thumbs we can give chest compression very gently. Suppose this is a baby. Sternal line we have to assess first and with the help of these two fingers, same like this image, we can give like that. Or else also after this we can give like this with the help of two thumbs up. Like that, fresh we can apply. Understanding everything? Adults CPR technique is very different. Like means, and we are giving chest compression to the adults. And here, you know, it's very, very carefully we have to perform on these things because those are very difficult. So, that's all. See, exactly, this is uh, actually on dummy only they are showing, but how they are exactly giving this chest compression. We give it for these two things, uh, these thumbs she is giving, and this is an umbola, and this is a mouth. Uh, which is packed and this is done. Understanding students how exactly we are giving? Imaginary line between these two nipples, and this is the lower third part of the body. Already I have shown the image also. So is the depth. The depth is very, very important. Only it will, at least it should be only half inch at a rate 100 to 100 per minute. Usually, how much depth we have to give? Only half inch. And 100 to 120 per minute. And the rate, rate is 100 to 120 per minute, coordination between heart compression and ventilation. There should be coordination between not even chest compression. Heart compression we are giving, or else in that oxygen supply or ventilation should be there. Then coordination should be there. Last, endocracheal tube incision. Suppose already we have taken some images as a infant is blessing. After that, we have started with the PPV. Again, after that, we have started with the chest compression. Still, we is not responding at all. The last, that is endotracheal tube incision. That is ET tube incision. So, in the patient, it is relatively difficult ski to master and it requires frequent practice, obviously. It is a very, very difficult skill and which will require practice for this, this for insertion of this endotracheal tube. What are the indications of this endotracheal tube insertion? Any idea? Yes, obviously at the age when baby is not responding at all for the previous majors, whatever we have taken, at the age we go with the last tube. That is a buccal stain like curve. Well, this is sufficient. Already I told you that is a buccal aspiration syndrome. That is buccal stain like curve is there. We have aspirated that buccal whatever. That's why 
makes the heart break. So heartbreak is complete if there is a missing of heart beat, then that time will give a zero. Same like respiration, if heart rates are also zero, it will give a zero. Huh? Now up to 100, the heart beats are up to 100, it's also given that. Huh? Then it's good, but 100, that time will give a bad score. I mean, more than 100, which is a good, that time will give a two max. Then the muscle tone is also very important, how baby is active or no, how baby is uh, giving this form or the muscle activity, how it is that time. If it's less say, then it will give a zero mark. Then in between, or very flex, he is moving his hands, uh, legs, belly. Means very flexing in there, that time will give a two marks. Very flex responses, as you are doing more normal reflexes. It's very, very important. So reflexes, if there is no any reflex at all, that time will give a zero mark. If crying is a crying, the baby is crying, well, I know that they will give a two marks. Color. Now, as I said, color is very, very important. Bluish discoloration, which is a, it shows pale or bluish discoloration, it shows the baby is having cyanosis. There is a oxygen deficiency, blood deficiency in the body. And yes, so that they will give a zero score. Next, cyanosis, let it be the one. And pink, which is very, it means usually babies are in pink, reddish in color, usually are the color, that time will be the two marks. This is about the scoring of the upcut. As per this scale, we have to give the marks or score to that particular baby. And the total score, total score which is already we are giving out of 10. So interpretation of this upcut scoring, it is for no depression, certain to 10. If baby's condition is well, so that time will give the score, and as for that score being a category is so if 7 to 10 score it is a maybe it's good, no any depression at all. Suppose next that is a 4 to 6 score it is a in between, medium level like that. So mild depression it is a that can see. Uh, severe depression, when we call it a severe depression, it is from 0 to 3. If 0, 1, 2, 3, like that score it comes, then it is called as Severe depression, baby's condition is not good at all. This is about the interpretation of cannabis of that score. Do so I want to show some videos? It's not open here, I will show you later. No problem. Before that, I will just show the videos to you. Because the neonatal may be stimulated to take a breath. 
and may inhale any fluid or secretions that are in the mouth. Assess the heart rate at the umbilical cord or the brachial artery. A normal heart rate is between 120 and 180 beats per minute. If the neonate's heart rate is less than 100 beats per minute and appears to be gasping for air, take the following steps. Heart rate 50 beats per minute. Shallow breaths, maybe 20 breaths per minute. Make sure the airway is clear and begin monitoring SpO2. Initiate positive pressure ventilation. Squeeze the bag only enough to see the chest rise. Continue assisted ventilation until the neonate is taking 40 to 60 breaths per minute, unassisted, and maintains a heart rate of at least 100 beats per minute. If the heart rate of the neonate is less than 60 beats per minute, start chest compressions. See how the other One, two, is three. Three. two people are required for CPR. Use the thumb and circling method at the lower portion of the sternum between the nipples. Depress the chest only a half to three fourth inches and allow for complete chest recoil between compressions. Continue at a compression to ventilation ratio of three to one with a compression rate of 100 compressions per minute. Reassess the heart rate. If the neonate's heart rate is greater than 60 breaths per minute, beats per minute, stop with compressions and continue with ventilation. Heart rate is 80 beats per minute. If the heart rate remains less than 60 beats per minute, intubate a neonate consider epinephrine. So these are two videos exactly like the first video was uh, the example of hyperemia aspiration syndrome how we have uh, conducted and in the next class it was uh, done. So we will uh, be for this uh, more we will refer to the use of the textbook that of some uh, and I'm going to take over the more video situation and the car. So these are the good textbooks which you can read more for the same. So here we have completed a very, very important topic that is a neonatal resuscitation. We have seen the introduction, the steps, uh, the pre-degree size, how we are preparing for the deliveries in detail. After that, how we are going to do chest palpation, what is the main PD, you know, critical tube insertion, which Whatever things or steps we have to follow for the neonatal resuscitation. I think that we will have understood well. Any doubts? Okay. So, next class, we'll continue the other this is, uh, condition. Let's do it at the Okay. Thank you, students. Thank you. Thank you so much.